Hello guys, I am Asif Khan and you are watching my YouTube channel I'm not happy, I hope so you all are fine and doing well I am also fine and well and enjoying my life So first of all I request to that if you do not subscribe my YouTube channel then please subscribe my channel And also press the bell icon button for more of this type of informative and educational videos So first of all uh, I want to tell, tell you that uh, in the previous video, I told you about the nucleus nuclear membrane and nucleolus. So today our topic is about the variety of life, and now we are starting new chapter. So, if you have any guess, if you have any question about the previous topics, you can ask me in comment section. I will reply you as soon as I can possible. So, without wasting your time, I get into the topic, which is about uh, um, variety of life. So over one and a half million species of animals and over a half million species of plants are known to deal with such a large collection of dissimilar uh, forms certainly we need some system by which species can be classified in a reasonable way many types of classification are possible we could we could for example classify flowering plants according to their uh, color height or any other character this type of uh, this type of uh, classification is not uh, meaningful since it does not uh, provide uh, any information about the basis basic difference differences and similarities among different individuals all organisms are related to one another at some point in their evolutionary histories however some organisms are more are more uh, closely related than others sparrows are more closely related to pigeons than either to the insects classification is based on relationship amongst amongst individuals uh, individuals that is similarity in form or structure biologists have classified all living things into groups showing similarities based upon homo uh, homologies Comparative biochemistry, cytology, and genetics large groups are divided into similar groups and species. Up to species level, a species is a group of natural population which can interbreed freely among themselves and produce fertile offspring but are reproductively isolated from all other such groups in nature. However, interbreeding cannot be used as certain or species recognition in predominantly uh, asexually reproducing organisms each species uh, possesses, uh, possesses its own uh, distinct structural ecological and behavioral characteristics and hence the species are independent independent uh, um, evolutionary units different species do not uh, exchange uh, uh, genes uh, between them since long uh, long evolutionary units long uh, different species do not exchange genes between them since long the living things are divided into two kingdoms plants and animals next each kingdom is divided into smaller groups smaller groups uh, called phyla also divisions for plants and uh, uh, plants uh, which is uh, uh, about uh, a phylum <coughs> a phylum is done divided into classes classes uh, divided into orders and an order is divided into families a family contains related genera <coughs> And a genus is composed of one or more species. Species is the basic unit of classification. Conversely speaking, the organisms are grouped into uh, larger and more, more inclusive categories. Taxa. Taxa. Each category is uh, more uh, is more general than the one below it and has emergent properties. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom form a hierarchy as uh, described in the classification of corn. I hope so. Member of a large category resemble one another more than do the 
members of a higher taxon. I hope so you understand well about this topic.